Okay, so we look there. Okay. Is it recorded yet? It's recording. Yeah, no, not now, babe. <laughs> Like, Not ready yet. I'm gonna take two. Okay. You can't just stand. <laughs> can't just stand and look at you like that. You have to look at the camera. Uh, babe, you, you know I haven't done this, right? I you know. know. Okay. Good thing is. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> You're making me laugh. Okay, we have to be serious. <clears throat> this is Lloyd. to say this is Lloyd because the first part was fine okay hi everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for subscribing for commenting for liking and for all your support on this channel and today I have a really special guest someone who has been a pivotal influence in my Christian walk and someone who's really special to me so thank you so much for coming on my channel I really appreciate it. this is Lloyd Oh, yeah. Today we want to talk about the importance of the word in a believer's life. Um, what do you think is the importance of the word in a believer's life in Christ? Wow, thank you for asking that question. Um, you may be watching this and you're a Christian. Yeah. But I have to understand that, you know, in John chapter 3, there's a famous story that, you know, Nicodemus came to Jesus. And Nicodemus wanted to, you know, find out about this Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and he said that, Verily I say unto you that unless a man is born of the water, out of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So the first thing, there we see the importance of the word of God. Sometimes when people read that scripture, they think the water is symbolic of water baptism. But in actual fact, in context, it's symbolic of the word. So Jesus is saying, unless you are born of the word of mm -hmm. God and the spirit of God, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So there is the first thing that we see the importance of the word of God. You have to be born of the word. Mm -hmm. And Peter, in, uh, in, in uh, First Peter, he mentioned this and he says that, you know what, we are born again, not of corruptible, but the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So there we see the importance of the word of God, that if you are a Christian, you are born of the word. And now, because you are born of the Word, you have the nature of the Word of God. But here's the important thing, number two. You have to understand that you have to grow in faith. And how do you grow in faith? 1 Peter 2.2, 2, it says that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that you may grow. A lot of times, a lot of Christians make, make this prayers to God and say, Lord, make me grow. Lord, make you grow. You know what? That's not scriptural. Because here's the answer to that prayer. The answer is, you have to go in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You have to do, be a doer of the Word of God. That's how you grow. Because the Bible says, as newborn babes, desire. Mm -hmm. So, who builds the desire? You do. The desire, the sincere milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. Just yeah. like in the natural. You know, like a newborn baby, they need what? Milk. milk. So, what happens if they don't drink milk? They get sick or they might die. Or... Exactly. Yeah. So that's what happens, to, you know, to the spirit of somebody who doesn't go into the Word of God. Mm. So the Word of God helps you to grow. Mm. And third point is that, you know, when you're born again, you now belong to a different kingdom. You're now in the kingdom of God. Because you're in the kingdom of God, you know what? Satan, hallelujah, is your enemy. So every time you find that he sets traps for your Christian life, it can be through marriage, be through finances, ministry. But how do you overcome Satan? Through the word of God. Through the word, yes. And Jesus, I love this. Jesus actually gives us an example. You know, in uh, Matthew chapter 4, when he was led into the wilderness mm -hmm. by the Holy Ghost, and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And Satan will come to him and say, if you are the son of God, you know, turn these, you know, uh, stones into bread. If you are the son of God, you know, cast yourself down. But how did Jesus respond? 
it is written. It is written, yes. Can you see? Every response of Jesus was, it is written. So why was, why is that in scripture? That is to tell you and I that in situations of life, you have to speak back to the situation. You have to say, it is written. Over your finances, you have to say, it is written. Over your health, you have to say, it is written. So your weapon that you use in your life is the word of God. Mm. But if you do not know the word of God, you see the problem there? And David said this, he said that, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Can you see that? And the, David also said that, The word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. So the thing that gives you direction in your Christian life is the word. Amen. The word is like your light. Because the word, the world is what? Full of darkness. Yeah. But the word of God is your, is your light. That's what the scripture said. The entrance of the word of God bringeth what? Light. Amen. So you see the importance of the word. And again, Paul the Apostle says something. You know, I get excited over this. He said, you know me. <laughs> you know, uh, Paul the Apostle says that in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. He's talking about the warfare that a believer goes through. And he says, as a believer, you have to put on the whole armor of God. Then he explains that armor. But take note that in that armor, everything in that armor protects you. Yeah. The helmet is protecting you. The breastplate is protecting you. The shield of faith is protecting you. But what you use for attack or offense, for offense is a what? The sword of the spirit. And the Bible says the sword of the spirit is the what? The word, the word of, of God. God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I strongly believe that putting on the full armor of God as well. Sometimes we can not have much of the word of God in mm. us. So in the spirit realm, we can look like we are not really, our swords are not really grown, fully right. grown. Our shields are not really fully formed because the word of God in us is not formed. So when the enemy begins to attack us, we don't really have a shield. We don't know how to shield mm. ourselves with the word mm. of God. So we go through, this is why sometimes we can go through even putting on the helmet of salvation. You don't really have the helmet on through the word of God. So, you know, sometimes the enemy can begin to attack you and you begin to be worried, you begin mm -hmm. to be sad, you begin to be desperate, right. um, anxious because you're not putting on the helmet of salvation, right. which is also the word of God. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Amen. So it's very important that the word of God is very important to the believer. And, you know, when you look into the word of God that the apostles did great and mighty exploits mm. through the word that's why you find that in acts chapter 19 verse 20 it says so mightily grew the word of god and it prevailed if you want situations in your life if you want victories in your life let the word of god grow mightily in your home let the word of god grow mightily you know among your children let the word of god grow mightily you know teach your children the word because if you want them to be, you know, like, you know, um, what, what's the right word? If you want them to be used of God, teach them. That's what the Bible says that, you know, train up a child in the way that it should yeah. go. Train up through the word. So as they grow in the word, wherever you, they are, the word follows them. So you see, people of God, that the importance of the word of God. Can you explain that again? Wherever that they are, the word follows them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yes, because it's very important that the scripture says, you know, train up a what? A child in the way that you should go. Mm. When he's older, you not depart from it. Mm. Because the, remember, uh, I love this. The Bible says the word is what? A seed. Yes. Remember that we've been born again through the what? Incorruptible seed of the word of God. So it, the scripture likens the word as a seed. So what happens when you plant a seed to the ground? It grows. It grows. And now our hearts are likened to ground. Remember like the seed, the, the parable the of the soul. Of the soul yes. And it says, oh, some seed fell on the pathway, some yeah. on the rocky places. And it says, but it was talking about the hearts of man. Yes. Can you see this? So imagine that you're planting the word of God in the hearts of your children. Amen. That, you know, you're not planting doubts and 
unbelief. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, you know, you know, sometimes we may not speak well over our children. Yes. And we don't realize that what we speak over them is also a seed. If we tell that, oh, you, you are just like your dad is a drop dead, you know, big dad is, you know, you never amount to anything. It's a seed. But imagine now when you plant the seed of the word of God over them, you, you speak to them, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the first and not the last. So when they go... In, in, in school or wherever they go, it's the word going with them. Amen. Amen. It's the word going with them. Okay? Because you have planted a seed in their lives. So it's important that we be people of the word. Because people of God, when Jesus comes, he's coming for a church without sport or wrinkle. That means a church which is like him. Who functions in the word like him. Because he is the word. And we have got his very nature. What's his very nature? The nature is we look like him. We function like him. He's the word. So we must become the word. Not just hearers of the word. But doers of that word. Of word. Amen. Let me just add to what you said about um, speaking the word over your children. Mm -hmm. Because maybe some of you have. Been maybe those children that haven't really heard the word of God over mm. your life, spoken the word of God over your life. So you might uh. think, you know, growing up, maybe someone kept telling you that you're a failure or that you mm. cannot amount to anything or you'll never really do anything in life. But when you begin to speak the word of God over your life, it cancels, it cancels and supersedes the words of man. You see, Hallelujah. the word of That's God sense. is so powerful, it's That's so sense. magnificent that it cancels the words of the words of man because That's the right. word of God is exalted above. God's very name. Yes, That's what yes, the word says. Yes. So it's exalted above God's very name. So sometimes you may think these people have spoken curses all my life, but the word of God can supersede a curse. Mm. You see, the word of God is alive and active. So right. it is the word of God that begins to cancel the words of man, cancel situations over your life that people have spoken for years. It's the word of God. And we must believe in the word of God. Yes. You know, amen. because it's the word of God that really transforms our lives. So we must begin to speak the word of, of God over our lives, especially if you're somebody who people always told you you're nothing, you'll never amount to anything. The word of God will change your situation yes, tomorrow, but what, right. but what you speak to in your life today. So amen. it's trying to add to that. Oh, amen. <laughs> yeah. So powerful. Glory. So, <laughs> so we can speak about we can speak about this. We all can day. speak all day, but um, <laughs> we just wanted to do something different today and just speak about you know the power of the word of God in a mm. believer's life. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll try my best to answer it. Thank you again for coming on my channel yeah. and sharing uh, your faith, sharing the powerful word of God, Amen. and um, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Right. Read a free chapter of Daphne's latest book, Incorruptible Beauty, and pre-order it right now on her website.